And we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Download the Uplift, a place where even when you fall, we're going to try and uplift you. My name is Gabriel Mark. I'm joined, hopefully as always, by my fantastic co-host live out there in 702 Las Vegas, Nevada. His name is Dane Davis. If you're watching on YouTube or Spotify video, you'll, you'll notice the premium video quality coming from Mr. Davis's studio. Oh, yeah. No, it's a... 2015 webcam on a laptop. It's great. Nice. Yeah. Good quality. I do want to say for podcasting, once we get so big that, you know, we actually have to rent out like a real studio, it's going to be a bummer because I'm in my pajamas right now and it's fantastic. Um, or we could just say FTW and go full Walmart and just walk around in the public with your pajamas. What are your thoughts? Oh, no, I, I would. I would totally do that. I would just show up to a professional studio in my pajamas. It, you're paying for it. So, like, <laughs> well, you know, what all those hours do? you logged at Tone Factory, how many times did you have people? Uh, how about this? Out of 100 artists that came in to record, how many were wearing pajamas? Um, It, it had to be, like, I don't know, at least 10. Yeah, so I like to start every podcast out with um, a little fun quote or something that inspires me. And this one came up. It's from Lao Tzu. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And I think that goes to this dream we're chasing here with the podcast and uh, becoming a content creator. But I yeah. do really like how that... Uh, how that makes me feel about anything you're trying to accomplish. Okay, you want to become a marathon runner. You got to learn how to jog correctly without messing up your knees. So what do you think when you hear that quote of the week? I think that's a excellent way of summing up the last podcast we did. It was just take the first step. And yeah, don't overthink it. So yeah, that's exactly what we were talking about last time. I do always like to also talk about what's going on. So iMessage is down right now. And I didn't hear from my co-host for a little bit until it was almost near when we were supposed to record. So uh, this is going to be coming out Monday. Hopefully, you, when you're listening to this, you didn't have to deal with any of the iMessage craziness. Did you have to deal with any of that? Uh, no, I, I didn't even know that. Yeah. How, how, long, how long was it down for? I don't know. It actually still could be. I looked on Twitter. Excuse me. <laughs> I looked on X and I was trending. <laughs> And uh, people, and there was all these memes, just like, you know, all those green texters, those Android people were like, yeah, see, I told you, son, we're, <laughs> we're, we're sending and receiving. No problem. Dude, I, I've, I've had blue texts all day, for yeah. all week. I, I don't know. Because it was on the big boy trending thing. Because I was like, okay, I want to talk about what the hell's going on. Where do I go for news? And, you know, if you look at certain news, it's going to all of a sudden get super political one way or the other. I was like, I just want to know what's going on. And then yeah. I looked at X and it says, I message down. <laughs> <laughs> what, was Optimus Prime reporting that? Yeah, thank you. I, I was working I on that. Man. down. <laughs> Autobots, so you, roll out. <laughs> you sound more like a Decepticon, so I guess we're we're rivals now. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's exciting stuff. And the thing is, last week, you know, we talked about embracing imperfection and stuff. And, um, oh, I'm so worried about it. But at the end of the day, it didn't launch to that many people. I think there's, like, on YouTube, 10, 10 people that checked it out. Maybe, like, two or three people actually listened to it. And I think that's something that's really freaking cool. I, I can honestly say, dude, I hate, I mean, how attached we are to these stupid things. Like, if you leave it in a Uber or something and your heart drops, like... <gasps> We got to find it. Like, and that's the worst thing. If you're with a group of people and you leave your phone somewhere, all of a sudden becomes like a wait for the whole group. Like, oh, oh we yeah. got to wait. Find my iPhone. Can I log in? And for what? At the end of the day, I think one of the times I was out in Vegas, I forgot in a car. I said, well, if it's gone, it's gone. I have insurance. Because at, sometimes that's all you can do. Because if you ruin a whole day or something because of a silly phone, that stinks. Yeah, I mean, you can get your contacts back and everything through Apple. So, yeah, you know, if, if you have it saved to the cloud, so it's not like a horrible deal. But I mean, like they're so useful. It's like it, you at least if you go out 
you need two things at the very least, and that's a wallet or your phone. No, I, I listen, I get it. And but <clears throat> so when I was a trucker for a little bit, they had to study atlases, like how to actually read a map because they realize you're it you you're probably in a part of the country where there's just no service and if you need to find out where to get someone, they want to make sure that we knew how to read a map. I've never had to navigate and read a map at the same time, except for like MapQuest. That's a throwback. <laughs> I know. Some of the young bloods listening don't even know about MapQuest. Yo, we're going yep. to Ohio. Better print out those 30 pages, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. The 30 pages of directions. I was, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> One full page is just take an exit ramp. There'd just be, I'll find a picture and put it up if you're watching this. The, <laughs> uh this channel is called download the uplift first of all i do want to address the fact that i'm doing kind of a lot like a mental health channel like i love listening to tony robbins i love listening to dave ramsey i love listening to all these guys that help people because i don't care if you're like you look at someone like dana white dana white runs the ufc and you probably think this guy does not struggle with anything mental health wise he gets out of his g-wagon he's probably worth hundreds of millions of dollars he runs a fighter league but i don't care if you're dana white uh, conor mcgregor like a blue collar iron work or a hardcore rancher like everybody deals with heavy weight on their shoulders and i think people might not want to even admit it but all of us are carrying around a lot of weight no matter what you do or what your profession is or how you try and model it so my thought process was okay i know i sure do you know i'm still working on myself so why not kind of share my journey with the audience so that's where this all came from it was more of just like okay i'm working hard every day to improve myself so why not share the story and uh, maybe offer some tips along the way. I don't, I don't know if this is going to throw you off from what you're wanting to talk about, but what what was like? Um, yeah, so well, so you're working out, you, you're you're doing doing your job, grinding on that, and then working on this podcast. Mm -hmm. What was like the most recent thing that was was a challenging moment for you in all that? So it was the start of the year, and. The Christmas tree was shining and it was New Year's Eve. I was like, I'm not going out. I'm not going out. Well, <laughs> I saw all of a sudden a Facebook ad came up and it was like New Year's Eve party. So I ended up going to the party. It was super fun. I was fresh to death. It's been a while. I met some cool people. Uh, I met this dope little nurse chick. The New Year's Eve countdown happened. And I was like, all right. So we shared a embracing kiss right for new year's eve like ah it was that super fun hung out with them all night uh nothing like other than that happened if you dirty dirty birds are thinking but you know it was cool she goes hey we're all gonna meet at this restaurant tomorrow let's go it was the day of the golden knights outdoor game in seattle so i was stoked i threw my jersey on threw some jays on looking fresh little of cologne and i went there and it was her and a dude <laughs> sitting at the bar alone i like i laughed it off i sat at the bar almost next to him i was like Psst. and i just <laughs> left but i don't know that kind of sent me into a spiral for a couple of days i ended up getting a new tattoo of course this whole leg is covered with wild just almost <laughs> benders if not benders but um yeah no and that and then when i finally got out of that rut and it's not even like i didn't care about her it's just the whole situation was rude and it just it I don't. I, yeah, I don't even remember her name. But. Yeah, I, I, I get you. It's, it's still like a disappointment. Like even, like yeah, you guys just met, so it's whatever. But it's still a disappointment. I, I totally get that. It's stressful, like trying to date and trying to, you know. Well, dating, as you know, I mean, you, you, have, you have your lovely young lady, which is a blessing, man. And yeah, yeah, but the thing sure. about being my age. Yeah, I'm definitely older than you. I'm the old man of the crew, 39, y'all. Is um you I'm 32. It's not, not that far off. Nah, you're young blood. I, I remember those days. <laughs> um I'm at the age now where if you're if it's like college kids, you're they're too young. Like I, I if I hmm. went out with a twenty one year old, I guess that'd be fun, but um but then if you go to girls like more my age, a lot of them like already have established families and maybe it didn't work out, which is, you know, obviously super hard, but, and I like kids. I definitely want kids. Um, but 
I'm I'm getting to that age where I mean, dude, we can have kids wherever. I think Robert De Niro just had a kid and he's like 80 something or Al Pacino, <laughs> but yeah, you're yeah. going to be the old guy at the graduation. And that freaks me out, man. Like I, I would be, you know, uh, the old man. Like if I had a kid, yeah. if I met a girl and we had a kid say when I turned 40, I'd be 58 at their graduation. I know that's me overthinking stuff. I, yeah, I, I, I get that for sure. Um, I, it's always happened. Like you've, you've had people who, um, have kids at an older age, people who have kids at a younger age. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's more part of the times these days, like people are having kids later and later in general. Right. Uh, I think that's, just, uh, that's statistically correct, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like I, I get that. I, I think about that as well, but then I also think about like, am I even ready right now to, right. <laughs> to do that? And yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that goes for everyone's head, I think. Well, that's it too. I mean, okay. So, all right, let's say the right lady comes along. Well, then you got to provide for a family. It's not just you and your dog. The world is heavy for a lot of people sometimes, but basically what happened with that young lady back to your first point was after I kind of climbed myself out of the rut, I just looked at myself with my you know, gut. And I was like, all right, time to make some changes. Like I will say the one thing about me leaving Las Vegas after 10 years is that I, I don't think it's anything against Las Vegas. I just think that I, me not knowing really anybody out here. So the only thing I could do is be faced with, okay, looking at yourself now, it's just you, you need to improve. You need to be better. And I, Ooh, I just got goosebumps. I said, I'm done. I'm done being, I'm done with, you know, feeling sorry for myself. I'm done with uh, being out of shape. I'm done with not having a direction, not having goals. And I just wake up every day and I'm just trying to be as self-aware as I can. So not for sure. Dude, uh, since the first day I met you, um, you've always had like this energy, like this go getter kind of thing. When, when you want to do something, you go and do it. Yeah. And I think that's, that's great. That's something that's, um, it's infectious. And a lot of people like having that around them. And yeah, like everything, everything that I've sort of uh, overcome as well, uh, it's always taken like a turning point where I'm just like, I'm, I'm over it. I'm done. You know, I I either want to give up A or or start doing B or whatever, Mm. but it's hard. Like I, I've had a lot of uh, false starts on stuff and you know, it, it happens like, but it's awesome that you're you're doing it and you've stuck with it for basically half a year. I mean, that kind of goes to either starting or stopping a habit, whether you're trying to ditch an addiction or pick up a habit, like going to the gym. No one can tell you to do it unless you join like the military and you go to boot camp. You have to decide like that goes with addiction too. like if you're trying to cut down on you know drug use or alcohol or porn or whatever, like there's plenty of yeah. groups and stuff, but you need to decide. Because at the end of the day, I mean, there's some, there's tons of famous people that they've been in and out of rehab a bazillion times. But until you say to yourself, I'm done with being out of shape, I'm done with being a mess, that's when things will change. Uh, it's when you decide to change. You need to commit if you want to change. No one else can do it for you. And and it's it, what I've noticed, like, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example as well, like quitting uh, smoking, like mm-hmm. multiple times. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, but every time I've done it, it's been cold turkey. Yeah. And and uh, I I think this time is pretty much a hundred percent like I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it I've like, a couple of years where I've I've quit and then I start again for like a year or six months or whatever. Um, and it, it could be because of multiple things, just because like I'm around it, uh, studio stuff you know, you're, you're around sort of more of a party kind of atmosphere. That's a fact. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there, there's a lot of different, um, a lot of different things that can happen or just like, maybe you go through something and you're like, ah, oh, screw it. I'm going to have a cigarette or I'm going to have a drink. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, just for a couple of days you do it and then you're, you're back at it. It's a, it's a habit again. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, like uh, I, I, I had to, I had to just not want to do that. Right. Not, not want to smoke anymore. Yeah. Whatever it was. 
So I totally get that. Cold cold turkey with cigarettes is extremely impressive. I mean, so what happens? You get like irritable. You get like the sweats, right? You kind of actually go through nicotine withdrawal. Is that what goes on? Or how, like, what's it feel like? Because I've heard it's comparable to heroin. Like, I don't know yeah. if that's true or not, but they've I've heard it's that. But, um, I, for so I'll, I'll I'll answer that, but then also like go back to like the first time I quit. Um, it hasn't been bad. It, I I've never Ooh. had like a huge withdrawal, and I and that might be a bit lucky for me. Um, you know, I I also I didn't smoke for like twenty years or forty years or whatever, so mm. that could be a part of it. But I I did you know smoke one to two packs a day very regularly for i don't know at least 10 15 years maybe some on and off at the very end of it but mm. um no uh, i did i didn't experience any of that stuff but i i think it's because i was ready yeah mm. wow i was just i was just done with with smoking and, and it felt it felt right it felt like i i also i didn't tell anyone people just like after a couple of days were like that. you haven't you haven't smoked a cigarette and i was like no nah, yeah i like just decided to quit so mm. and and i also i gave myself uh the the way the way that i looked at it mentally i, I was like you can smoke and do whatever you want but right now if you ask yourself do you want a cigarette the answer was no so i just wow yeah that, that's how that's how I treat it. It's still how I treat it today. If if I want to have a cigarette, if I've been drinking or whatever, I'll I'll go ahead and and do it. I don't inhale it usually, but just for like the flavor, whatever. Right. Um. But that that's few and far between. I think the last time I did that was last year. So. Yo, you know yeah. what's crazy about that though? And so you did this no like gum. Or patches or a vape or anything, huh? That like no yeah. BS. That's freaking impressive, man. Thank you, man. That's um, crazy. <laughs> it, it's like like when when you're mentally ready to do something, mm. I feel like half the battle is being fought or or already been fought, right? Like you have to want to do something, and then you have to handle like all the stuff that comes with that. Like you know, if, if your body is going through a withdrawal or anything, then yeah, you got to deal with that. But I felt like half the battle was already fought. Me mm. just going, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, mm. And it took me a long time to get to that kind of a situation, especially the uh, the first time I quit. I would look up videos of people who like would give you tips and tricks on on how to quit smoking, and they'd say mm -hmm. like, wean yourself off. Uh, use patches, use alternative things, uh, gum, like whatever. And I actually remember seeing the, this guy on YouTube, and nothing against him, but he, um, he said, you know, I, I quit smoking, and it's the worst experience of my life. I think about it every day, and just watching that video, I was like, this is gonna suck. <laughs> right, he you you got and your it, head. Yeah, like, this is this is terrible. Like, I I don't want to. I don't want to be, I, I, I thought to myself, like, I don't want to be a non-smoker who's constantly thinking about, you know, having a cigarette and, and it's bugging him. Um, but I can honestly say, and if anyone's watching this, like going like, Hey, I'm thinking of quitting. Um, when, when you want to, it's not that bad. Like when, mm -hmm. when you decide, like, I'm just done with it. Like, it's not even a negative feeling about, um, smoking or not smoking. It's like I just don't want to be addicted to this anymore. I don't want to have to rely on it anymore. You know, that's the the biggest change that happened, and it was super easy. Yeah, you know, wow, for, for me <laughs> at the very least. Wow. Well, yeah, I was gonna say definitely for you, for you. But no, mm -hmm. that's awesome, man, and I love that. You know, it's crazy. I think there was a like a gym motivation or a Navy SEAL YouTube clip clip, and there was a guy going. You need to decide to win. And so that's exactly what you yeah. said. You're like, you got to decide, baby. Probably got an extra couple of shekels because how much is a pack of smokes these days? I don't even know. Oh, geez, man. It's like 10 it's bucks, to... right? <laughs> yeah. It, it, so it, when when I was smoking, 
I uh, I did a couple trips to um, to England or the UK um, and Ireland, and that was like freaking nine ten dollars. I was like, this is so expensive. But now now it's nine ten dollars here, and it's probably like fifteen over there. I wanted to say that must be your inner rock star because that and Jack Daniels. I don't know what goes together more like peanut butter and jelly freaking smokes and jack you're so wait you're no longer a jack guy right or are you the main thing is just i like i barely barely ever drink caffeine and it's it's oh. only only if i have a, a jack and coke now and like caffeine affects me like pretty badly yeah so, uh That's yeah scary. so i'm on white russians now i'm doing the dude that's uh, why white Russians because yeah. of caffeine. Well, you could do like a corking fee and bring your own caffeine free cokes into the bar, into the McMullins. Be like, hey, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 when I was younger, I actually I used to drink the caffeine free Pepsi. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I might I might do that just you know because I, I still like Jack. But... <laughs> <laughs> I guess the way you think about Jack. Um, actually brings us to our lesson of the day. And one of the reasons about this cup, the last, I think one of the last times I drank out of this cup, I was in an RV and this thing was filled with Jack Daniels and I cannot drink whiskey. But even when I do drink, it's like white claws these days. Like this thing was filled, which ended up sending me to like need like medical attention, nothing like crazy, but yeah. So, Hmm. but when I look at this cup, that memory is kind of stuck with it and which brings me to one of the things I want to talk about today and it was all about not dwelling in the past and kind of how to get past it um I know last week we talked about embracing imperfection but that brings me to the subject but the real thing that made me want to talk about this was last night I I was going through my phone and uh, I don't know if you guys have done this before comment down below if you have but I like to do house cleaning on my photos and I was looking through Man, from the move out here to all of 2023, which was kind of chaotic, to 2022, which, you know, started off really chaotic with the trucking thing. And then 2021, when I was in the RV and just going through these memories, and I made some pretty crappy decisions in my life, which made all of a sudden took my whole mood into like a really bad place. I was like, oh, what did I do? You know, I started kind of looking back at the stuff I've been learning and, 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 you just cannot dwell on your past. So right off the rip, like what are your first thoughts when you think of when I bring up something like just the act of dwelling on past choices and past decisions? Like what, what kind of comes to mind? That's a that's a great thing to to bring up as well when, when you're trying to make changes in your life is that you know, you allow allow the past to be what it is, you know. I think that's uh Something that I've uh, asked myself whenever I've gone through that whole, like, you know, things, the mistakes I've made in the past versus, like, what I'm trying to do now is uh, it, it becomes a question of, like, am I still that person or am I this new person I'm trying to be, you know, um, which is it's, it's a hard thing to do because sometimes, like, you, you can think, well, you know, I'm, I'm never going to get past being the way that I was or, or whatever it is. And, you know, it's, it's hard. Like there's stuff even now where, you know, multiple, like I said, the full starting uh, sort of deal um, where I've tried to make changes in my life multiple times and then it just doesn't end up happening. You know, like other things get in the way and, or whatever it might be. And and you just lose track of the, the goals and everything. But mm. Yeah, I mean, I I guess for the things for the things that you have solid, you know, that, that like you you've been at it for six months now, you know, like if you ever struggle with like, am I still that person or am I this new person? You know, just remind yourself of how far you've come with everything, and um, and just focus back up on your goals. Just be like, yeah, like uh, that that person. In the past, you know, the part part of me is is that person is still that person, mm-hmm. but 
hundred percent. I'm I'm moving on to to different things. I'm trying different things in my life, and yeah, that, I mean that's still stuff that for certain things in my life I still have to do. So the baggage, like we talked about earlier, and the weight people carry around, it's it's hard to, and it's not even like necessarily just financial stuff, or it's just like, bro, I, you get to start thinking about relationships you might have blown up or decisions you might have made and all you can really do man like the first thing is i'm gonna give myself a break you know what i mean if if you're listening to this and you're carrying around some demons or maybe that's a little harsh if you're just carrying around some bad vibes like that first of all let's start with just giving yourself a break okay it happened it's okay i'm gonna learn from it and give yourself a little self-love and self-compassion because one of the things I try and do is, all right, let's say I really screwed up one way and to accept it. And then when you're accepting it, like, okay, it happened, but how do we grow from here? How do we learn from that? How do we make ourselves better? So, okay, hey, man, I got passed out at a bar. <laughs> you know, I made a fool out of myself at this establishment or I did this or I did that or I, I, I or something as simple as, yo, I had a really awkward moment when I was a young kid with this girl at the playground, or maybe last year you met some dude and it was really awkward and you, you're like, Oh, I wish I didn't say that. I, every time I think of it, I cringe. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you gotta have self compassion and you gotta just learn and grow from that. But. Yeah, no, for sure. It, it, like that, uh, that time when the uh, waitress gets you your food and she's like, enjoy your meal. And you go, you too. And you're like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Hello, darkness. I'll never live it down. (laughs) I'll never live this down. No, but yeah, no, totally. Like you have to, you have to give yourself a break on, on all that stuff, and you know, whatever. Like that person probably thinks about it it, or doesn't even remember it, right? And and you think about way more than they do. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so funny about the waiter thing or like the (laughs) drive-through. It's happened to me all the time. Like multiple uh, times but enjoy yeah. oh yeah enjoy yeah you too <laughs> yeah. um yeah. man everyone's worried about themselves and their own camera you know what i mean like i don't mm. know how to really put it but and you how about this you always think when you're walking into walmart that everyone's looking at you but they're all thinking the same thing as well so if you can get out of your headspace and forgive yourself a little bit when it comes to past experiences like that, it's the same thing. Like you just said, other people probably don't even remember some awkward situation or that time that you were a mess. Like I, I remember being at like bartending and seeing people that were absolute messes, but I couldn't even put a face to those nights. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. It's like the, the story and the experience matter more than like who it was specifically. Mm -hmm. And, and even if, even if you like saw that, that guy and then he was like hey man like i was i was a huge mess at your bar sorry about that i've cleaned up you know a completely different person like you'd be like oh oh cool man well good to hear that and you right. you wouldn't be you wouldn't be thinking ah yeah i remember that night it's crazy <laughs> you're a real jerk yeah like, uh, like most well pretty much everyone it, it, they're just trying to live their life and uh and they're trying they're trying not to mess up as much as possible as well so like mm-hmm. they you know they're not they're not as harsh uh judging you usually than than you you are yourself that's what, mm. I, that's what i've uh noticed a lot but. 100% i don't know actually you know what i was a door to door salesman back in like 2005 or something i lasted like one day <laughs> it was like do you want new fiber optic internet oh my gosh it was yo those are the true i don't know what never mind i'm not gonna talk about that <laughs> but um yeah you're gonna say those are the true heroes the, the fiber those, optic they are bro hey salesman. the cold approach sales job is a really hard gig if you can if you can nail down learning how to walk up to somebody and sell them something then you're at a an advantage for sure yeah yeah if, if you can go Hey, how are you? I'm just <laughs> <laughs> just sell anything. Oh shoot! Going back to what we were talking about, man. It's just when you're dragging around all this weight. Um, I also said I also looked up one thing, and I do this a lot: practicing gratitude. 
Now, this isn't even just for dwelling on the past and trying to fix that, but send out some gratitude texts every morning and um, something about when you, it doesn't even have to be anything big. Like, yo, Dane, I really appreciate you working hard to get your thing to work last night. Like something about when you put that kind of vibration out and that's very crystal of me, man. I know. But when you put those kind of vibrations out, it, it changes what come, comes back. That's another thing is I try and every single person I run into out there in the world, even if they're jerks, I try and kill people with kindness because it helps lift your spirits. I know it's a selfish yeah. way of looking at it, but it really does. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I agree with that. I, <clears throat> I always try and take the nice approach to things and, and all that. And you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but no like you know if you if you go to certain places though there there's like the there's some hospitality like like texas is one of them like yeah and, and i know you brought this up but yeah like you go there and everyone's super polite to you it's it's awesome and that, that may not be everyone's experience uh but just yeah personal yeah experience. yeah no texas is a big place but no that was the craziest thing i mean well listen Austin and uh, San Antonio and Amarillo, they're all like completely different personalities, but the place that I'm at, like it's wild. The sir and ma'am is unbelievable. And I think it should be preached in school. It's like, <laughs> go anywhere. It's, Have a blessed day, sir. It's almost like Southern hospitality, but I don't know if it's really, I don't know. Basically yeah. it's just kind of, you get out what you put in. I'm just trying to say like, if you're kind of in that that bummer mood practicing gratitude really helps just to kind of change your any negative vibes into a positive mindset my my final thought that i was actually really want to get to was being broken down and messed up and probably at your lowest point and you don't have to comment on this because it's yo know, it's it's nothing that i take pride in but bro like going through withdrawals or uh um, mm. spending a ton of money or just literally i didn't even want to look at the pictures i've took you know probably sent out horrible selfies or texts i sent or relationships i blew up or money i spent all that stuff that leads you to the ability to rebuild you know what i mean that is kind of what i'm practicing now everything's in the past i'm owning it i'm thankful for the fact of where i am and i'm alive now but now i'm going to rebuild stronger than i was before and yeah. when you grow and you make yourself stronger mentally and physically that's the way to turn the most horrible of situations into a positive one. So just when, even if you're going through it right now, guys, and, and you really made a mistake, like, trust me, well, as I get more and more comfortable with this podcast, we'll get more detailed stories of my past decisions from basically 18 to 39. <laughs> Any of those mishaps are just reasons to get back up in a stronger, better way. Yeah, I know for sure. How does not dwelling on the past uh, relate to you get out what you put in. If you're like constantly focusing on the past, then you're stuck there in your head. So like, it's exactly the same thing. Like whatever you're, you're thinking about focusing on, that's, that's what life gives you at the end of the day. Mm. Um, as much as you, you might be like, well, I want this, I want that. Like if, if you're not taking the steps to actually do those things, then I want doesn't turn into something that actually happens. So yeah, I, I think those are very relatable together. So dwelling on the past, we're carrying around a bunch of ghosts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, say that again. Like, uh, cause that, that really, that it hit me so hard that I've, it like knocked out what I was going <laughs> to say to it. How does not dwelling on the past relate to you get in which, uh, you get out what you put in mm -hmm. and it's you know, if you're stuck in the past, if you keep thinking about the past, that's where you're going to be living. Right. And whatever it is that you say you want, you know, if you're not doing anything about it, if you're not trying to live that and mm -hmm. you're just like, I want, I want, but you're not actually doing anything for it. You're never going to get that. Oh my gosh. That's so true. You, it's just like we talked about when Dane quit cigarettes or I made the decision to just stop being a mental mess and a physical mess. It's, you got to, you get out what you put in. Like there's plenty of days where that's why the video that came out last Friday, you're listening to this on Monday. So you already listened to it. The journaling aspect is so, it's so, so, so crucial. You got to do it. Get, it costs 88 cents and just scribble down everything that's on it. Think of it as like a, a faucet coming off of your brain, just getting all that nonsense out. You said you get out what you put in, but at the same time, a couple of days ago, I was just, dude, I wasn't, 
I, I had some stuff going on and you gotta, you gotta allow yourself to be negative once in a while too, though. Like maybe oh, it was just me. And for just for an hour, I was complaining and I was writing it all down, bro. But you should see the chicken scratching this thing. But dude, there's so much passion that comes out, and I I highly recommend it for you, brother. I I'm gonna turn you into a, like a meditating, journaling, crazy dude like me because all you ask anybody between meditation and journaling, those two things, it takes up 20 minutes of your day, and it will change your life. I know that sounds deep, but it will, especially no, yeah. you with 17 jobs and a family and a girlfriend and all this stuff. <laughs> like yo, there's so much being thrown at you every single day that being able to shut off everything your phone your job the family the girl the dogs and just be quiet for 10 minutes and listen to a meditation you literally will feel so good and i do that i go right into yo i am just i can't believe with everything i put in i get nothing back from these people or i i can't believe that uh i've you know i have to deal with a podcast the guy can't get his camera to work <laughs> Nothing specific or anything, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that sums up. I, I didn't, I'm glad that we kind of, like last week, I was all over the place, but it was our debut. But don't carry around the baggage. Just own it. It happened. If anything, I like to also, this thing is like, let's say that that event happened. Try and go back and look at it from a third. Look at it as if it was a movie, okay? Then, it, then you can play it out. And then you can press stop on that video and it's done. Own it. It happened. Learn from it. Because yeah. like, it's not going to go anywhere, bro. You can't change it. So you can either be a bummed out dude or uh, that phrase that you used earlier, uh, decide to change or wh whatever you said was awesome. You can decide to be like, okay, let's improve. Let's decide to be better and just uh, leave that where it was in the past. So it, you you were saying um, earlier, allow yourself to be negative sometimes, yes. right? Yes. No, yeah, I I, I think that's important because um, I think people do. This is a podcast about positivity and stuff like that, but I think people do uh, take that as like never be negative, never right. be angry, right. and and right. always treat people like uh, perfectly. Always be perfect. Um, that's like such a high amount of pressure to put on yourself. Ugh. So ne never, you know, it, I I think that's part of like, you know, what, what you said earlier, like give yourself a break, mm -hmm. allow yourself to just, you know, <laughs> be upset, be angry about something. And um, at the same time, I think that you learn uh, to give other people a break when, when they do that themselves. You understand that it's just something that, sometimes needs to happen and it's not always pleasant sometimes people do too often they get angry at everything yeah but it but it, you know going back to the first episode balance is always good you know what what you're saying as well with like allow yourself to be negative you you know you know the movie uh inside it's the one mm. with it, it's a the disney movie it's got all like the emotions it's got happiness sadness anger oh, I, never, I never saw it but uh oh, why dude. What's like the whole premise? Basically, they all live inside as your emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's you know a fun Disney movie, whatever. But um, watch it. Okay. W watch it, and then uh, and you'll you'll absolutely one hundred percent see like how that relates to what you just said. It's important to uh, to let emotions out. To sometimes be sad, sometimes be negative. Uh, yeah. Because they're all they're all a uh, part of a yeah, the mechanism that, that drives us. Yeah, at the end of the day, we're human. I'm just a dude that's hanging out, trying to, I'm trying my best to be my best. And I hope that, you know, I mean, that's all you can do. Last week, we did talk about, you know, looking at everybody else and thinking they have the perfect life. And dude, check this out, man. So I'm not rooting for this because I said that way too happily. So Ben Affleck and J-Lo are apparently... Uh, divorcing. Apparently, he already moved out, and I can already. I saw a thing on social media, like all the lawyers for that for that case, like rubbing their hands oh, yeah. together. We've all seen the meme of him, like outside smoking a butt, drinking Dunkin' Donuts, like uh, that. Me, you know, he's got like he's dealing yeah. with all or him. Like, did you see the one where he walks her to her car, 
and he slams the door. Oh, uh, no, I haven't seen that one. Well, that's just proof that literally you think that though they're literally famous, multi, 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 a hundred times over millionaires. And you think that they probably have the perfect life. And that just goes to what we said last week that stuff isn't always perfect. Well, grass is always greener. And then, Ooh. yeah, dude, imagine having that microscope on you, like every single thing that goes on in your life. There's freaking tabloids all right. over you. Just yeah, it's a lot of pressure, uh, it, man. That's a lot. Yeah, it it hundred percent is. And and the the thing is, like I've uh, I've had a bit of experience with um with uh, journalists and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, like they'll and I didn't have a horrible experience with them, but they'll spin the story how they want it. You know, so anything anything negative is going to get just exacerbated exacerbated however you pronounce that um and yeah it's it's a horrible thing to i i like i can't imagine like you're looking over your shoulder every time you exit the house i think that i mean you look at some of these rock stars that you know they it was the ultimate you know chester and um Mm -hmm. from chris cornell yeah chris cornell you think these guys literally are living the perfect life and dude they're bummed out because it's like exactly like you said uh microscope you know all mm. this fame and all this stuff and they i don't know if chester could have gone to walmart to go get a thing of mixed vegetables you know what i mean it's so it's, yeah. it's definitely the double-edged sword um okay you're fame famous and wealthy and then again there's all these like billionaires that want to be rock stars so well it's just yeah, uh, th- there are people who I think they're they're always out of the tabloids. Like, they, you know, aside from their their art and what they're doing professionally, like nothing in in their lives are uh, interesting enough for the tabloids uh, to be like, oh, what are they doing? And you know, right. following them around. And I I think that's great. Like, if you can do that, perfect. Right. The moment you have like any kind of drama or if like you haven't figured something out in your life yet, like yeah, it be, it becomes uh becomes something that people like hold a microscope to. And you know, even with Chester and Chris Cornell and stuff like that, I think yeah, and and, and this is in a good way, like fans hold like a microscope to the lyrics and trying to figure out like, you know, what it means and and mm. where they were at with it. And I think that's how they relate to people um that's how all musicians do like you know just if you if you actually have something to talk about and you put it in a song like that's how you sort of get in touch with with the world in a lot of ways and that's how that's what music did um for me in a lot of ways when i was younger but yeah like even that it's it's held under a microscope people speculate things and that's like in a positive way uh that you know fans are doing that but still like it's it's just a lot of uh a lot of pressure i i think with with chester and lincoln park it was probably a horrible thing to have to deal with where we're like fans not liking the the changes that they were doing and yeah i i think i'm a bit guilty of of that in a way as Whoa. well but yeah that now that i look back on like all their art and everything and like all the lyrics chester would say and stuff like that I, I was like yeah this is like really really deep stuff and and you can really kind of tell what was happening in the, in his head you know damn now i need to go back down the rabbit hole because i don't think i've ever taken a deep a deep dive into lincoln park lyrics in general and so what happened when so what it was meteora and then reanimation and then Wait, wh- what happened that people were being negative? Was it their latest album? I it was so long ago. So, yeah, um ah, I'm forgetting. It was it was their uh white album. It it was the the, uh, the song that was on like Transformers. Um I'm forgetting what it's called, but Oh, Minutes the, to Midnight. Yeah, Minutes to Midnight. Yeah, that that was the one. Okay. Um and it wasn't across the new this new divide. It was um well, I don't know, pop it up on screen or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm gonna. I'm glad we can um, actually use this. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we can do a share. Yeah. Yeah, minutes to midnight. Um and uh, what, what song is it? I've done. Yeah, what, 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 what I've negative done. about that? 
No, um, so this, what I was going to say is this was like the last album I feel that like the old school hardcore Linkin Park fans were still like happy with. They they might have just like a little bit have, have been like, ah, I, I don't really like what I've done as much as like the heavier stuff. Right. Like, you know, Hybrid Theory. Um, oh, uh, this is like Meora. This is a top album, bro. I mean, oh, every yeah. song yeah. is good. Yeah, and then then after that, like after minutes to midnight, they started doing more dancey stuff and experimenting with their um, with their sound. But you know, like there 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 were songs where I was just like, ah, oh, yeah. I mean, I I like the old uh, Linkin Park a bit better. I wasn't like super negative about it. But yeah, like they were getting a bit of backlash from their fans. Um, but now, like I said, looking uh, looking at everything, hearing everything, like. I I I get it a lot more, you know, like um like uh the song One More Light, you know, I I I well actually that that one it was for Chris Cornell, so I I, I got it immediately, but Minutes to Midnight and and that there were a few songs that, that people just you know weren't really feeling and um but yeah, like the, they're an amazing band. I'm I'm super happy that I got to see them live before Chester. Dude, passed. that's cool. I didn't know that. That's epic. I I didn't. Yeah. Wow. I, I actually saw it with my my whole family, my parents and my brother. So it was <laughs> yeah, it was like a family rock night at, at the Hard Rock in Los Angeles. Reason Vegas. number one hundred thousand million why your family's awesome. <laughs> that's so cool. We're all going to a borderline metal show. Let's go, kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, metal, metal friends and like that genre or rock fans in general, they're brutal, dude. I wanted to also bring up um, <laughs> yesterday, Netflix released a doc, docu-series about um, Ashley Madison and when they got hacked and 37 million cheating spouses info got leaked. I don't know if you remember that or you're, maybe you're too young. So Ashley mm. Madison was a website. Oh, it's so creepy, dude, or grimy. Like, yeah, I I thought you were talking about a person. This this is a website yeah. called Ashley Madison. Yeah, and basically, if you wanted to cheat on your husband or wife, you could go on there and find other people. I think that wanted to cheat. And uh, the no. Netflix thing is, I guess, I don't remember what year, but um, everyone's info got hacked into and leaked. So basically, like, you're all cheaters, and it got released. So. Um, I'm actually gonna watch mm. that when we stop recording today. I'm gonna watch an episode or two. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds crazy, man. That that's that's like, um, well, it, it, it's sort of a dating website, but for cheaters. Mm. Um, but anyway, <laughs> the last thing I wanted to show you, and I, it's mainly just so we can use the sh the screen share f uh, function, and then we'll wrap up. Did you see this young lady? God, oh my goodness, I can't even imagine what went down. She was driving on a bridge. And she, some, some guy was driving erratically. He got arrested, swerved into this tractor trailer's um, lane. She dove in, like, this is between Indiana and Kentucky, and was hung out by the fifth wheel for a half hour till rescue workers could get there. The truck was over oh, the God. side of the bridge there. Can you imagine? So she she dove like out of the way of the, of the, the Cisco truck? Or? No, no. She was driving the Cisco truck and the erratic driver went into her lane and she didn't, I think she didn't, uh, the oh semi truck crashed through the rail of the Clark Memorial bridge, uh, 1215, which crossed over the Ohio river. Semi truck, uh, initial report suggests the truck was heading northbound when it crossed, uh, the sound of screeching. There's, there's dash cam footage and literally it made my hair hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Um, Wow, that that's it's so lucky that the truck got stuck in in the. Um, well, dude, I mean uh, that's so. What this is yeah, is this is the fifth wheel, and the mm -hmm. fifth wheel, um, the kingpin is on the back of this trailer, and that locks into the fifth wheel of the the tractor from the trailer. Yeah, and if you think about it, this thing could be loaded up with you know forty thousand plus pounds. So this needs to be a really strong connection. But yeah, man, that that's that's some crazy stuff. I just wanted to show you that. I, this is me. Um, this is a new thing we're gonna do. We're gonna have a little mental stuff. I'm gonna check out X for some cool news stuff, and then we're gonna chat about it. Which makes you listening 
Make sure you not only do you listen to it on Spotify, do us a favor, but come check it out on YouTube. Actually, Spotify has video feed too. Yeah. But um, it was, I think, a pretty successful week too. Uh, but yo, so Dane, anything else you want to add before we uh, – because by the way, I had some feedback like, yo, I was, I was wanting more. But uh, oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> well, it was yeah. from Johnny. He's like, bro, <laughs> I was really digging it. And uh, I, I just wanted some more, bro. Well, you got it, brother, because this is at an hour 23. Let's say edits. But this one actually went really smooth, which gives me so much hope, like not that I'm already overflowing with it. But no, like compared to last week's, which I thought was still pretty entertaining, this was awesome. In closing, guys, thank you so much for if you've made it this far. Thank you so much. Uh, make sure to comment if you have any thoughts or something you want to specifically hit, or if you want to hear a crazy story from me on a bender or something. I'm an open book, y'all. I'm uh, I'm owning who I am and who I was, and uh, that kind of goes back to just not dwelling on your past and more just owning it. Again, uh, anything else, Dane? Uh, no, I think that's it. That's thank you everyone for watching and or listening. And uh, yeah, let us know down in the comments if you have any stories or things that are hard to let go of that are in your past. Mm -hmm. Let us know down in the comments. It'd be interesting to see that. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And this was download the uplift because even when you fall, we're here to uplift. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll talk to you next week. See ya.